Hi, I'm Scott. Today we're going to have a look at this tiny little battery powered portable air compressor. Coming up next on Goldbling Docks. So I get a lot of requests from companies to do video reviews on my YouTube channel. They want to send me free stuff so that I will put it on the channel and review it or basically sell it for them. Uh, the last one I did was the Hulkman battery charger. You know, it's like a jump starter, battery powered jump starter, which I thought, you know, that's, that's applicable to motorcycles. It could be actually be used. So I did a review on that. Since then, I probably get two, three, four requests a month, every single month from companies in China who want to send me battery pack chargers, uh, jump starters for me to review. I'm like, this is not the battery jump starter channel. So I, I'm not quite sure. I mean, when I get stuff like the Innov K5 camera, I mean, this is meant for motorcycles. This is a no brainer. People love those. Uh, but sometimes I get stuff that's like right out of left field. I, I got a request from a company. They wanted to send me a it was like a surveillance camera so that you could put it in your house and watch your pets or something. I'm like, have you even seen this channel? Do you know what this channel is about? I don't know why these companies think that they could just send random stuff to, to people and have them review it for free, but they do. Anyway, so I got a request from this company, uh, Ballot, and it is for a tiny little portable air compressor. And they said, and I thought, well, actually, that's probably useful. I know 1500s, 1800s, they have onboard air compressors and of course the 1100 and 1200 they do as well but yeah, those compressors are actually meant for the suspension yes on the 1500 you have a hose so you in an emergency you can use that to air up your tires but it's a tiny little compressor and to replace that if you actually burn that out or or damage it from using it to inflate a tire a, a used one is going to cost you a several hundred dollars so for that reason, I actually carry a tiny little compressor in my bike with me that I can plug into the bike and use if I ever need to air up a tire. Now, why would I need to air up a tire on my bike? Well, I carry tire plugs with me. So if I get a, a nail or something in my tire when I'm out far away from home, I'll actually pull that nail out and I have a t plug kit um, and I'll put a, a plug into the tire to seal it and then I'll use my little compressor to air up the tire so that I can get home. Now, once I get home, a plug tire not really safe on a motorcycle, so I'm gonna be replacing that tire, but it got me home, and that's the point behind this. So this tiny little portable air compressor, the difference between this and the one that I carry is that this one is actually rechargeable. It has an internal battery that, so you don't have to actually plug it into the bike to run it. So I thought, well, we'll have a look. I, I'm, I'm like, I usually I am, I'm pretty skeptical about these things. It's pretty tiny. I don't know if it's gonna actually have the power and capacity to actually air up a tire. Um, but we'll find out. So this is what they sent me, this little box here. Let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. I will post a link to this on Amazon. This is obviously what they want me to do. They want me to post a link on Amazon. So you will go and buy this, but if you are interested in this, I'll, I will post that link. Okay, so we open it up, and what do we see inside? We see the compressor itself. It has nice plastic protective sheeting on it. We'll take that off. Instructions. Okay, we'll look at that later. And there's a hose. Oh, we got some adapters so you can inflate, uh, you know, air mattresses or soccer balls. And what looks like a Schrader valve adapter. Well, we'll look at that in a moment and then a USB charging cable. And that's it, that's all that's in the box. Okay, so we've got this little thing here. It's got look, what looks like a flashlight on it. And, oh, okay, so we have a Schrader valve connector on the end here, nice little short valve. And then this hose, which obviously screws into the top of the pump right here. All right, so I had a look at this. The buttons are kind of labeled obscurely, you know, it's like little circles with the lines and, and this is clearly the power and we have plus and minus. I tried to figure out just by pressing the buttons and it wasn't immediately obvious. So I did revert to the instructions. Uh, these are written in typical Chinese English. Um, <laughs> 
They call this, the, this tube, they call it the tracheal intubation. Oh my God. I don't think the writers of this manual know what tracheal intubation actually means. Uh, yeah, okay, so it does have a little light on here. It took me a little while to figure out how to get that to work, but we'll, we'll go over the buttons and see how that works. So obviously we just push and hold the power button down and the unit will turn on. And it is defaulting to car mode. And if we push the top button, it switches it from, you know, so we have car, which is 25 bar and motorcycle, and it has these preset values. Now, um, you can also push this bottom button here. We'll switch it, you know, kilopascals, kilogram per centimeter square, and then at the top is PSI. Um, so then if we switch here, it would see, so it, think, it thinks for cars, you should be at 36, motorcycle should be 31, more, uh, bicycle 30, soccer ball nine. Okay, that's all very nice, but you know what? All these devices are completely different. So I would recommend you ignore that. Instead, use the plus and minus to set the pressure to whatever it is you want it set to. So if I wanted to put you know, 41 PSI into my bike, that's what I would do. So the overall basic mode of operation is you set the pressure to whatever it is you want. It will flash, that's the preset pressure. It then shows you what the current pressure is, and then you push the power button to turn on the pump. And press it. You can press it again to turn it off, or supposedly it will turn off once it reaches that preset pressure. We'll give that a test. Uh, what I did figure out, I had to revert to the manual to see, is that if you push and hold the bottom button, the little tiny light comes on, which is, I guess, helpful if you're trying to do this in the dark and it'll illuminate the, the tire so you can see what you're doing. Pushing it and holding it again will turn it off. It did come charged to about three quarters, about 75% it shows there. In fairness, I am going to take this and I'm going to let it charge to 100% before I actually test it, uh, just to make sure that we're giving it a fair test. So I will go ahead and charge this now. Once it's charged fully, I will then move off to the garage. We'll give this thing a real world test. All right, so we've fully charged this thing. It's taken about an hour and a half to charge it. You just plug the USB-C cable into the bottom there. Um, I'm gonna use my little valve core tool. If you don't have one of these, you should get one. I'll put a link in the description below to uh, let the air out of my rear tire. The rear tire on my bike is uh, a car tire. It's much larger than the front one, so I'm going to use it for the test because it's going to be a, a tougher test for this thing to use. So I'll just unscrew the valve core just a little bit and wait for all the air to come out. All right, so I've now tightened the valve core back in. Now, if there was pressure remaining in, in the tire, when you put this on, it'll actually show you what the pressure currently is. So this actually works as a, as a tire pressure gauge as well. Okay, so we will take this device and we'll put the air chuck onto the valve, push it on and lock it in place. And we'll turn this on. Hold down this button. There's our display. Now I want it in PSI and my tire takes 47 PSI on the rear. So that's what we'll put it to. And then we push the button to start. So it's a little bit loud as you'd expect an air compressor to be. Um, I will time it to see just how long it takes to get the 47 PSI. Okay, well, I had my doubts as to whether this was actually going to do it or not, but it has got to 47 PSI. It's used, it says it has about half the uh, battery remaining. Um, that took 24 minutes. So let's take the valve off and, and the hose and the chuck. Oh, it's, it's actually all very quite warm. I'm not surprised there's a compressor in there and a lithium ion cell in there that is being drawn upon quite heavily to a lot of current in order to power that. So let's put on my good air chuck and we'll see how accurate it actually is. And my chuck says 51.5. So the accuracy of this thing is not great. So I'm gonna bring this back down to 47 where it should be. So it did over inflate 
uh, you know, about four PSI. Okay. All right, so what do I think? Actually, I honestly didn't expect much. I expected uh, that I was probably not gonna be able to run long enough to inflate my tire. Uh, I th thought that maybe the battery was gonna run out or maybe it wouldn't get to 47 PSI. That's why I picked my, lower, my rear tire because it's larger and takes higher pressure than the front tire. But it actually did. Would it be enough to fill your car tire? Maybe, if it was, uh, you know, your car tires are probably closer to 30, 35 PSI. They're larger. I mean, this is a car tire, but it's small for a car tire, a regular size car tire. Would it fill you know, a tire from like a big truck or something? Uh, probably not. That said, I gave it the worst possible situation where the tire was completely empty. Usually your tire is not dead empty like this one. You have some residual pressure, so it has, uh, you know, it's not starting from zero. Uh, it, it definitely runs hot. Um, it does take four to six hours to charge it once it's, it's empty. But uh, it's, it's relatively light. It's small, compact. You can take the hose off of it and put that next to it. So, I mean, you could pack that up inside your saddlebag and it's not taking up a whole lot of room. In fact, that's taking up a lot less room than the compressor that I currently have in my saddlebag. So I think I'm gonna use it. I think I'm gonna keep it. I will put it in my saddlebag and replace my uh, old one that runs off the bike. Um, the only thing I do have hesitancy with is the buttons on the front. They're not particularly well protected. If you have stuff in your saddlebag, uh, it potentially could get pushed up against the buttons and trigger them on and turn them on, which then would obviously drain the battery in this thing. Um, so that's the one downside to this that I can see. I can probably rig up something, a cover or something over the buttons to keep that from happening. Other than that, um, I actually, I'm, I, like I said, I honestly expected to say, yeah, pass, but um, no, it worked. It does what it says. It's, it's resolute, light, small, and uh, I'm going to recommend it. So if you uh, are looking for a compressor on the road, you have something to go along with your tug, tire plug kit. And you know, we have a monthly contest on the Goldwing Docs website where we give away a motorcycle related accessory for free once a month. All you gotta do is click to register and uh, post in the forum. And one of the popular ones we give away is a Dynaplug tire plug kit set. So um, you you know, go to the website and register and win a free one. Or if you don't wanna win one, you can, I'll put a link to the Dynaplug tire plug kit in the description. So you'll find that next to the, the uh, link for this item here. Uh, if you wanna have a little, uh, you know, a second chance if you're out on the road and you get a tire puncture, you don't want to be rescued. You don't have to wait for rescue and there might not be rescue where you are. Uh, this is a pretty good alternative. It's going to take you half an hour. You're going to have to plug the tire and, and you'll have to wait for this to, to uh, pump the tire back up, but at least you're not stranded. Uh, if you like what you saw here today and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to click like and subscribe down below. Click that little bell because uh, then you get a notification when we post a new video and it really helps us out. And of course, don't forget to check out the Goldwing Docs Forum. We've got so many friendly people on there, lots of experts that can help you with any Goldwing issue you ever have, and plus lots of friendly people. So just come on and say hello. Thanks for watching.